episode number 146. And I think that's the biggest lesson that I learned is that I didn't have a big enough name or following yet. I needed to be really specific about the conversations I was having with people and how I could specifically help them. Welcome to the Be Real Show with Travis Tutal and Hoff, where we talk about life, dreams, social media, and business. Well, hello, and welcome to the Be Real Show with Travis Tutal and Huff. Folks, I'm fired up today because we are going to bring you some leads because we're talking right now to our featured guest, Michelle Evans. Michelle, are you ready to be real? I am ready, Travis. Thanks for having me today. Absolutely. I'm so curious to this because we're all trying to get more leads. But a little bit more about Michelle. She walked away from her global marketing strategy role at Microsoft uh, after a long career with them and working in different industries. Uh, But now she loves working on her own with lots of different types of businesses, uh, coaches, consultants, speakers, uh, solo entrepreneurs, helping them go from survival mode to sellout. Sell out, folks. You know, that's what we all think about when we're having our next event. We want to sell out. We want to sell out of our advertising. We want to sell out. Um, but most importantly, folks, she's using her experience uh, of the past and all her experience at Microsoft in helping uh, clients produce more income, more results, more leads, and less stress from the marketing funnels. Where I, if you've set up a marketing funnel, you might have had the experience of it like, taking a lot longer than you realized and, and then not getting any leads from it, right? So uh, it's a pleasure to have you on the show today, Michelle. Also, folks, she has her own weekly podcast, The Marketing Funnel Show, that you can also take a look at, uh, subscribe to, and get her content so that you aren't staying out of the loop. Uh, but it has been a pleasure to have you on the show today, Michelle. What's, what's going on today in your world? Oh, you know, <laughs> like you said, just focusing on getting leads. But yeah, I got to be honest with you. There's a big difference between leads and like people who are bought into what you're doing and are ready yeah. to buy. Right. 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 <laughs> that's the uh, that's the waiting game. <laughs> or, you know, in some businesses, they just they. We'll, we'll call you 50 times a day. <laughs> when yeah. The second they get a lead, they'll, you know, shoot you an email every hour and they're going to hit you with 15 different drip emails and a, a phone call from some automated service. And um, so it's all about the follow-up, I think, right? Is that kind of the secret too in, in, in uh, businesses? Because, you know, you can get 10,000 leads, but if you're not following up, they're not, what is the real value on that? Yeah, you know, oh, I, this is going to be a great conversation. I can tell already um, <laughs> because the truth is you can't, you can get tons of leads. Like there are leads everywhere, right? but the, the difference between, you know, an email or a warm body versus somebody who actually is paying attention to what you're doing and is interested and ready to open their wallet or <laughs> write a corporate check. Right. Those are two really different people. Absolutely. And Travis, you know, just to, let's underline this here. I worked with a mentor. I was in a a mastermind a few years back with a mentor who runs a multi-million dollar business. Right. And she was all about that sort of spray and pray, right? Like get as many leads in the door as you possibly can and then just hammer them with follow-up. Like you just, you know, we're talking about. And I was like, okay, it's kind of not my style, but you know, all right, we'll try this. And, um, so in a a nine month period of time, I went to over 50 events. Yes. I did tons of Facebook ads. Like I did everything I could to bring leads in the door and to follow her model because, you know, she has this multi-million dollar business. Right. And I got zero sales. Like we'll just cut Mm. to the chase. Zero. (laughs) A lot of effort too. A lot of effort, a lot lot of travel, a lot of money out of my pocket. Right. Uh, a lot of hours dialing and dialing and dialing. Right. <laughs> Following up and just getting back to people. and Yeah. And, and, you know, just really feeling like every day I was starting over from zero. Like I have to just get on the phone and see if I can make some sales. And, you know, clearly I wasn't talking to the right people or I wasn't talking in the right way because I got zero sales from all that. I got a lot of leads, but zero right. sales. Right. And 
it was about nine months into that, that I was just like, look, I need to change something up because I am going to have a breakdown and yes. go broke if I don't start making some sales. Right. And so I went back kind of to my roots and I said, I'm just going to put a super simple marketing funnel in place. And I send this out to the people already on my email list, like yes. to the people that I've been, you know, cultivating and bringing into my world who all have said no to me. Right. And I rolled this out. And within three weeks, I had made more sales than I had in definitely in the previous nine months, but wow. like I sold out my one-on-one -on -one services Wow! and I had a waiting list and it took 26 calls to do that. And it really was because I went from just like the spray and pray, like I'm just going to try to sell everybody my services to having a really specific conversation about a really specific problem that people were interested in talking about and solving. Mm. And then selling your, your services to work on their projects specifically exactly. kind of with their needs and how exactly. to fix their funnel, how to make yes. their, their funnel better. And I've never gone back to the spray and pray. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I think it's in, in general. I mean, let's be real. Some things work for others, you know, yeah. like the spray and pray might work for some businesses. Let's just be real. That's just the truth. But for most businesses, if you want to be efficient over time, you're better off doing exactly what you're doing. You know, find out where you can really provide the most value for them. And then, you know, start with the list of people you have. And, and instead of having to pay for new leads, you know, start with that and, work off your web traffic or work off, you know, the, the contacts you already kind of have, um, then going out and meeting new people that you've never even met, you know, now you're gonna have to educate them about who you are and things like that. I think uh, a lot of people forget just the power of their own network. Um, yeah, for sure. And also, I mean, what I learned from that Travis, because obviously after I went to my own list then I had to go, you know, find new people again. Right. right. Um, but what I learned is that instead of just being super broad, which is what um, that mentor had asked me to do when I was going to all of these events and stuff, just be super broad, just talk about marketing and growing right. their business. Right. That doesn't, that didn't work at all for me. It, I haven't really seen it work for many people unless they're super charismatic. Yeah. Um, they already have but, a big following like Gary Vee and he exactly. can talk about VaynerMedia. I mean, see. Yeah. Yeah, and if so Gary B's going to come back again, he's in the show. Hey, how do you build a great show? Yes. You know, how do you get guests on a show and how do you build a, a following on social media? I mean, he's not going to, he, he would have a lot more success if he was not, if he was starting out before Gary V, you know, is now. And then it's a lot easier when you're big to say, oh yeah, I'm going to do everything. Yep. But you have to wait for the, the moment to your big <laughs> until, you know, I think you're absolutely right. I think that the more focused you can be, the better. Yeah. The more focused and the more specific about the problems that people had, because just like you said, like everybody knows who Gary Vee is yeah. and we know that he, you know, has some sort of magic that we might want. But there was a time when he was really specific about wine, wine right? Lovely. Yep. Yep. And he had his wine show yep. and it was about like choosing the right wine and paying the right amount for wine. You know, like he was all about wine. So yep. he started out with a really specific thing and then he just got broad from there. And I think that's the biggest lesson that I learned is that, you know, I, I didn't have a big enough name or following yet. I needed to be really specific about the conversations I was having with people and how I could specifically help them. Right. So I have two quick questions here before we get into our top 10 for you. Um, where is your favorite place to drive your funnel? If you are going to spend a little money in ads, I know it is different for every business, but yeah. in general, where are you seeing the best results? Is it Facebook? Is it Google? Is it YouTube ads? Is it Instagram? Yeah, for me, it's really Facebook. Yes. Um, that's, that's where my, um, audience is hanging out the most. Uh, for me, Google ads are just way too cost prohibitive for the category that I'm in. Right. Um, but I do get a lot of organic SEO traffic. So I do uh, invest in SEO strategies, but uh, when I do paid stuff, it's mostly Facebook ads. Facebook ads. It's good to know, folks. Just remember, you know, you can spend your money driving your lead page anywhere, but, you know, I've heard it more and more. Facebook, Instagram stories, I'm seeing more traction mm -hmm. on. Uh, a lot of ways to advertise on there. And uh, Facebook really just understands the targeting, 
which I think is so crucial to advertising on digital that you maybe don't completely have on Google. You know, you have it based on like the keywords they're searching, but you don't have this kind of like person. I mean, they are actually getting better at their audiences, but it's still not like Facebook targeting. Um, yeah, I agree. And that you can really hone in if you want to talk to 5,000 people in a, 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 you know, millions and millions of people in the world on Facebook, but you could really talk to only five or 10,000 people if you created that specific of an audience um, or a hundred thousand people, you know, for and, sure. Yeah. I mean, I've done ads for people where we're just targeting a specific zip code. Yes. Oh yeah. That's a, yeah. if you're a local business and you are not doing zip code targeting, you're missing out because you're absolutely right. I mean, gone are the days of having to spend a ton of money on flyers mm-hmm. or direct mail. Not to say that business is, isn't effective for some businesses, but for a lot of them, you can do these zip code targeting. If you know where your ad, if you know where your top four zip codes are in your, your local area, you might as well be hitting those people over the head with your ads. You know, I mean, I find it, you know, especially if you know, your real, like some people really know, like you said, one zip code that's bringing in everything. And so yeah, it's like, especially if it's a big enough one. And, and when you know the conversation you want to have with your audience about the, the problem that you're solving for them, boy, that it can be really, really effective to just yes. be in front of them with that. Yeah. Yes. And cost efficient. Cost yes. Efficient. For Anyone sure. could do it. I mean, you could do a campaign for a dollar, three bucks a day, you know, a hundred bucks a month. Every business should be able to afford a hundred bucks a month to see if it works. Does it get you any action? Is it getting you some, some clicks? Is it getting you some calls? Uh, so the other question I'm going to have is when you're building a funnel, okay, I've heard lots of different strategies about funnels and I'm so curious to, if you're building a funnel, do you build it off your page? Do you build it on your page? I've heard host it on a separate page in your website to drive that. I mean, I find it to be like, well, if you would want to drive a funnel, you'd want it to be in your website somewhere. I feel like. Mm. that's just me. I don't know. I don't know a ton about funnel marketing. So I'm curious. Yeah. You know, it's a really good question. And for me, I have entry points into my funnel on my website for sure. Okay. My webs, there's, there's places where you can take a quiz or you can download things on my website a hundred percent, but I host my funnel separately. Yeah. I've heard about this. Okay. Yeah. And and the reason that I do that. So my, my website sits on WordPress. Yes. And you know, it's like my digital home where my podcast, my blog, like lots about me, all that stuff is there. Right. And because there's so much there, if I were to send traffic there, they could easily get lost. Right. Got you. So I want to send them to a specific page. Yes. Where we have a specific conversation about wherever they came from. So, um, for example, you know, if somebody's like, Hey, I want to know what, you know, the right funnel for me is I want to send them to the page where they can take a quiz to find the right funnel for them. Right. I don't want to send them to my full website where they could, you know, get distracted and then not yes. find that. Yes. So then my next question is, is there a site or service that allow, allows you to host these funnels? Oh, there's lots of them. My favorite that I use is ClickFunnels. ClickFunnels. Yeah, my, that's my favorite uh, because for me, like I can build a funnel and I can give it to you and you, then you can just alter it for you know, for your own thing. So it's easy for me to give them to clients, to give them to students, you know, whatever, so that people don't have to start from scratch and building. So you can almost build them a template. Exactly. Exactly. And then how do you do that? How do you share it? How does, how does that, how does that work? Do you have a code or something that they, yeah, it's just a, it's just a URL and you click it two clicks and it opens up into your own ClickFunnels account and then you can go to town and make any changes you want. Ah, it is so slick and so easy and I love it. So shout out to uh, his name, Russell, I think it is. Yeah, Russell Brunson. You watch his, you watch his uh, click funnel videos. I mean, the guy's building these crazy funnels in like two seconds. And it's like, oh, just do this, this, and this. And it's so funny because once you get into it, it's not that easy. But it is. It really is, but it isn't. You know, because you build. Yeah, company. I mean, it's like, easy when you know when what you know. the conversation is yes. that you want to have with your people, yes. and and what you're going to do at each step of the way. Right. But that's part of what like the funnel building magic is. That's right? the secret, and that's why he's he owns ClickFunnels. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's why he's rich. You know, he's building the building huge businesses because of it. Uh, yeah, that's why people pay him a million or more dollars to, uh, to build, build these them a funnel. crazy funnels. Yeah, like <laughs> Camping World and some of these guys that consult for him. He he builds in these very awesome funnels that work. Yep. Um. Really cool. Really cool. And I think 
I find it because we have a social management business that if you had someone on social, if you had someone on their email or this funnel, uh, that's the best, you know, two relationships you can pretty much have with someone in this world. I mean, I think sending people text messages is kind of irrelevant unless you're like a restaurant and you're like, or like a service business and you're trying to update your, say someone comes in and gets their car service and then you like text them and say, Hey, your car's ready. Like I get that. But like to send me like car offers every month, I don't know that it makes as much sense, you know, and it kind of gets right. annoying and everyone has to have experienced an automated bot call by now. You know, hey, I've got money for you sitting here. I'm your loan officer. I just got you approved for $2 million. Uh, yeah. It's happening all the time and they're spoofing your, they're spoofing your, your local area code. So they're not coming from a, they're not coming from a weird number. They're coming from your local area code, you know? Uh, but I feel like, you know, kind of all that stuff is a little still very spammy to me. Yep. You know, but if you have someone authentically connected to your social LinkedIn connection or your your Facebook, you know, page connection, although there's obviously limited reach there, but there are your, your social and you're connected to them on email. I mean, that's, that's the, 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 the two hottest tickets you can have right now. Right. I agree. I agree. In fact, people like to say email's dead, uh, but it's not. People no. are in their inbox all the time. What's Absolutely. dead is being spammy. Like what yes. you were just saying. Yes, 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 yes. Know, just do irrelevant, stuff. irrelevant content. You're, you're, yeah. You're just to post it. You need to. But really when you have it. social where you're sort of staying in their awareness, yes. right? So you're constantly, you know, putting updates or whatever um, your strategy is. And then you have emails that are coming to them, having targeted conversations. Right. Those are two great ways to build trust, to build, you know, belief in what you do to stay in their top of mind. So that when they have the need that you serve, they're like, Oh, I know exactly who to connect yes. with. Or they're, or they're telling their friend. Yep. Because some, sometimes people might not use your service, but they, because for some reason they've, can't use it because their corporate policy says they can't have an outside outside vendor uh, manage social. But mm -hmm. their best friend just started a restaurant, or their best friend just started a business, and all of a sudden they're saying, "Hey, man, you, you know, you need to connect with Travis and his team." I mean, it's yeah. happened more times than not. Where there's certain situations, even people that just don't want to even get leads, they're just like, you know, like I'll just be frank. My father, he's like, I don't even want to grow my business. You know, he's at the stage where he's just trying to maintain it, and he's at the later stage of his life of working. And he doesn't want to grow his business. He doesn't want a website. Now I'm trying to educate him the benefits of it. But the truth is there's a lot of people that just, they don't want to be on social media, you know, they don't, and they might not have to, right? I mean, that's just the truth, but that doesn't mean my pops has brought me some of his clients over, over the years. You know, he's clients have said something to him. Hey, what does your son do or whatever? And he's told him and, and we've connected the dots and had, he's been a great salesperson for me. You know what I mean? So <laughs> So it's yeah. just interesting how, you know, you don't necessarily always have to be, when I talk about your network, folks, what I was talking kind of in the beginning is you don't always have to be serving these people, but just they need to know that what you do so that now I know Michelle does leads and she's all about marketing funnels. And then I have someone that crosses my path, then that makes, I'm going to connect the dots, right? I mean, you know, I don't do that. So, Hey, Here's a lead, Michelle, right? I mean, that's just kind of the, the idea. That's right. And the nice thing about marketing funnels is that it makes it really easy for your network to just say, hey, you know, if, if you had a friend that said, I wanted a marketing funnel, you could say, hey, look, Michelle has, you know, this download or this article or this yep. um, quiz that you can take to find out what uh, marketing funnel is right for you. Here's a link. Just pop over and take it. Like, it oh, totally. makes it really easy for people to refer you. Yes. That's a great point. So yeah, it even especially makes it easier for you to refer. What was that? So it makes it even easier for your friends and, and family or customers to refer more business to you. That's exactly right. And, and, mm, and it makes it like, it just makes it almost a no brainer where they're like, Oh, I know exactly who does that. And here's something you can go check out right the second. Yes. Good point. I like that. Well, now we're about to take you to our top 10. It's our newest segment of the show. Here we go. Okay. Apple or Android? Apple. Apple. Netflix or Disney? Oh, Netflix. Netflix. Instagram or Twitter? Uh, Instagram. Insta. Chicken or steak? Mmm, that's a good question. Probably steak. <laughs> steak. Yes, filet on a good day. Uh, laptop or iPhone? 
Ooh. Uh, oh, that's a good one. iPhone. iPhone. It's hard not to live without one. Though. Yeah. Spotify or Pandora? Pandora. Nice. Movies or video games? <laughs> Movies. <laughs> you I'm never know these days. Movies. You never know these days. I'm not good at them either, but you just never know. It's fun. Different guests like video games, and, and video games are, folks, people make millions on video games these days on these esports. Yep. Uh, it's pretty crazy. I was talking to my sister about it, uh, thinking about like us wasting our time, and then now like the new TV commercials on from like Samsung are about like she's like leveling up, and like next thing you know, she's like at this top game and making money. It's interesting. Um, <laughs> reading books or listening to books? Listening. I love Audible. Oh, yeah. I love Audible. I think Audible is, man, Amazon's so smart. Yeah. Stocks or crypto? Oh, hmm. She's like, oh, not that one. <laughs> Probably crypto. Or do, or do, yeah, crypto. Okay. Nice. Okay. Oceans or lakes? Oh. Um, lakes. Nice. Do you have a favorite lake you like to go check out? Uh, here in Washington state, there's one that I love. It's Lake Chelan. It's right Lake. in the middle of wine country. It's always clear and gorgeous. I love oh, it. Nice. Lake Chelan. Yep. And now we're going to go into the B-Roll show where you can give us a little more insight into you and a couple more real talk questions. Sure. Tell us now, why do you love being you? Oh God, that's a good question. Um, I love, I love that I've come to a place in my life at my age where I'm just, I know who I am and I know where I add value. Mm, And, um, you know, for a long time, I, I spent the early part of my career really looking for permission from other people. And I've gotten way past that, you know, (laughs) as a mom, as a business owner, all sorts of stuff. Like I just, I feel really good about the decisions that I've made and the, and the, business and the life that I've created. And it's really, um, it's really been fun to empower myself to say, you know what? I don't have to ask anyone for permission for anything. Mm, it's all on us at the end of the day. Right. So, yep. and that's the, that's the beauty of being a mom, a mom entrepreneur is that you have your flexibility, your time, you can be a superstar for your family and then also rant, uh, manage your business. I mean, yeah, it's, it's an amazing yeah, world we have today. Model too. I have two girls and a boy and you know, just showing them that whatever you want to do, you can do. Right. How exciting. That's cool. And then also, can you share with us, how do you typically like to start your day? Um, <laughs> ideally, I love to get up in the morning and like do some Pilates and listen to some either audiobooks or some favorite podcasts. But, you know, in reality, I'm usually chasing the kids around saying, it's time to get out. Time to get to school. Time to go. (laughs) Eat some breakfast. Shovel this down. Let's do this. Yeah. I mean, we're just going to be real, right? (laughs) Yes. Make sure you guys are all, you know, got your hair combed and. Yeah. Do you have a lunch? All that stuff. Let's go. Let's go. (laughs) I understand. I understand. But on those dream days, you would be doing some Pilates or something like that, looking over Lake Chelan. Uh, well, right. Lake Land's about three and a half hours away from us, oh, okay. but I would be doing okay. some Pilates and like just spending mind some right. time with myself in the morning. I like your style. Now, what is the skill you're looking to master? Is there something you're wanting to get better at? Yeah. You know, one skill that I've really been working on this year is meditation. Ooh, it's just nice. carving out some time for some quiet meditation. Yep. Um, and it is a skill. Oh, it is. <laughs> Do you use an app or do you just kind of find your own way of meditating? I've tried lots of different things. For me, the thing that works best is just to go on YouTube and find some good music and set my timer and literally just go into meditation mode. Zone out and just start, stop thinking about life and just kind of. Yeah, exactly. The interesting thing about meditation is you have to learn to know that it's okay that you're sometimes come back to the normal life, normalcy. Yep. And you kind of just let your mind go back into meditating and you kind of, that's the art of it is being able to allow yourself to not come back and say, Oh shoot, I got to email this person back. And Oh shoot, I got to, this <laughs> meeting at one o'clock. Why am I meditating? <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> but then yeah, and really having it, that yeah. discipline to, to stay um, yes. open. I, I don't even want to say focus, just like open. Right? right. Right. Just not where you just have no thoughts. It's the hardest thing to do. 
Yeah. It's one of the best things you can do for your mind and for your body. I think that, and shout out to calm too. I like the calm app because it is very simple and easy and they have short meditations, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes where, you know, headspace and some of those are really good, but it's for a much longer kind of period for some of them. Yeah. And, and, um, you know, a lot of us don't have 45 minutes to meditate. So we only got five or 10 minutes and that's okay. You know, um, if you, if you got an hour, that's shout out to you too. Cause you've carved out an hour and it would be hard for me to stay in that zone for an hour. Well, and I mean, I love that you're calling out some apps. I mean, one of the gateway for me was really the free Oprah and Deepak 21 day challenge. Ah, I, okay. I started doing those like a year or two ago and I do them when they had the challenge and then I'd kind of fall off. So this year I've been much more disciplined about continuing to meditate, but yeah, there's a lot of good resources out there. Oh yeah. It's, in, it, 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 like you said, YouTube is one of the best sources too. Um, and then, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it, it's a skill, it's a real skill. And it's something that as an entrepreneur, I think it makes you better, makes you uh, have, be able to deal with those difficult situations you might come up with. And, yeah. uh, and also just, it puts you in a state of gratitude, which is yes. what I find, which yeah. is, I think the most important thing you just be grateful for water and for, you know, going into the bathroom or whatever it is and be able to flush the toilet. Cause a lot of people in the world can't do that. And you start thinking about those two things. And then you're like, wow, all these emails and things I got to handle are no big deal. You know, like <laughs> this is all first world problems. This is not the world. Most of the world, some of them don't get this privilege. So, um, that's what I personally love meditation. So sorry, going a little long there, but, uh, can you also share with us tonight for dinner? If you could take anyone out in the world to dinner, who would it be? Ooh, you know what? It would probably be Oprah. She's Ooh, been, I love Oprah. Yeah, she's just been such a, um, I, I love somebody who comes from nothing and builds themselves up and then at the top of their game decides to like walk away from everything and start something new. Like Switch I just love that. Yeah, she switched it up, huh? Yeah. So I should sell her Oprah. or Sarah Blakely. Like both Ooh, of them I'm nice. really, I'm a huge fan of. So either one I would take to dinner. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I think both of them have very unique stories and in different ways. Because yes. one's more even more entrepreneurial, I think, than than Oprah, who was started out kind of more as a reporter and started out kind of more on the 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 media side, you know. And yep. she knows how to really build this media empire and then Sarah Blakely just she really knows how to build a huge business. Just, I mean, a huge business because, you know, Spanx is insane. I mean, they are uh, an incredible business. Um, and I, and I can only imagine she's going to, she's probably buying other businesses and doing all that. I know I see her on shark tank and things like that, you know? So she, uh, yeah. And she's an amazing businesswoman. And now she's a mom of four. Wow. So, you know, she runs a billion dollar empire That's plus insane. And now she's a mom with four kids under the age of eight and wow. so, or eight and under wow. it, it, just amazing. So those two people I, I love, so sorry, I can't choose one. I'd have to. That's okay. We're going to tag them both in the post on, on social media. Um, also, do you have a book that you are either reading now or has really impacted you? Oh, I have so many books that have really impacted me. Um, but one that I have listen to. I mean, let's just be honest. It's audible. Um, is big magic. Ooh, and so okay. it's a, couple, it's a, it's a year or two old now. I think I've probably listened to that book more than 30 times. Wow. I okay. Love so it's that big book. time. Yes. Yeah. Big magic. We're going to put that in the show notes. I've seen that one and I have not downloaded it. I've it's, seen it I mean, though. You know how it suggests new books to you. You know what I mean? I, I've, yeah. seen it. I've seen it because it's, it's based on some of the books I'm, I've read or listened to. Uh, big magic. I'm going to put that on. Yeah. So Elizabeth Gilbert is the author and she, um, you know, she's a writer, obviously she wrote eat, pray, love and a bunch of other books, but that's the most well-known one. And what I love about that book is that she really talks about being open to opportunities and then putting in the work. Oh yes. And I, like, there's just, there's some parts she's specifically talking about it in the, in the lens of being a writer, but I take it away in terms of being open to entrepreneurial opportunities and being willing to put in the work to actually let these opportunities come to fruition. Yes. Cause I think that's the hidden secret. Yeah. The hidden secret is it takes work. <laughs> it does. 
<laughs> How'd you build real time? Oh, uh, well, nine years ago, we thought we could start managing Facebook pages. I had a conversation with a friend at Starbucks. He said, hey, people are going to need their business pages made, uh, you know, managed. I was like, you're right. That was, the, that was the big idea. That was the light bulb effect. But it's been a lot of work. It hasn't just been like, oh, yeah, we just built it and it just went off. You know, I mean, no entrepreneur that has built anything of success knows that it takes work. That's the, the beginning is just the start. Yeah. You, know, you can think of a new, oh, I thought of the next Uber app. You know, well, good luck. You got to start building it. Unless you're a programmer, you're going to have to come up with $200,000 to get someone to build it. You know, so it's going to take work. You know, that's right. And in that book, I mean, she talks about dealing with failure. Yes. She talks about, you know, tackling things after you've had success and, and being willing to tackle the next big thing, even if it's not a success. Like she talks about all this stuff, which is huge for entrepreneurs. Yeah. Yeah, because perfectionism, you got to just work through it. And I, I love failing, you know. I mean, you can look at yourself every day and say, hey, we make many failures a day. Uh, you could always be better. You could always do better. But the most important thing is you keep on going. And you That's keep right. on working. You keep on fi- learning. And, and learning, uh, yeah. Because it's, it those, it's those lessons, those school of hard knock lessons that you you really just have to learn, right? Uh, that's what that's what, that's what basically experience is, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, that's why the plumber knows how to fix your leaky sink because he's seen a few of those things. Yep. And that's why you have no idea, you know. So it's it's quite uh, funny how sometimes we think we can do it all, but then at some point, you know, you got to just put in the work if you want to be something that you're not. You got to work at it. Um, but last thing, can you give our listeners, Michelle, one last real talk thought? <laughs> You know, the, the last real talk thought that I would give you is, you know, learn from my school of hard knocks. Don't be general. Have, mm, you know, when yes. you're warming up your audience, when you're going out there and you're looking for leads, when you're looking to grow your business, be really clear on the conversation you want to have with people and, and how you can help them. Yes. I think that's probably the biggest piece of advice that I can give people is, you know, get out of what you're selling and get into how can I help the audience that I really want to serve. Wow. Well, you've been ho- uh, hanging out with folks with Travis Too Tall Enough and our amazing guest, Michelle Evans. We want to thank you again for your time today and let's keep being real. What another epic episode. And uh, if you enjoyed the episode today, can you please do me a favor and subscribe to our podcast, The Be Real Show, on iTunes or your favorite podcast platform. And also take a little time today, if you don't mind, and give your boy T-Huff a review. I would really super appreciate it. And thank you so much for listening today.